Hello and welcome to our educational welding video series here at College of the Sequoias in Tulare, California. My name is Randy Emery where I am a welding educator at College of the Sequoias and I'd like to invite you to check out this first in a series of welding educational videos. These videos are being produced in an effort to deliver an educational experience that is more flexible when, and which can be accessed anytime, anywhere. For our first video, we describe four of the most common welding processes and give a brief overview of how and when a particular process might be the best choice for a given application. Okay, what is the SMAW process? SMAW is shielded metal arc welding, also known as stick or manual welding. And the SMAW process uses a metal rod covered with flux that provides a shielding gas when burnt off to protect a molten weld pool. The SMAW process is the most widely used arc welding process in the world. Some of the process advantages are that the process has a very low startup cost and the process is also very portable. SMAW is very well suited for outdoor welding as well. These features make SMAW a perfect fit for the construction industry. SMAW can also be used in all positions. SMAW can be used in a wide variety of base metals due to their large mechanical property range. Because of the wide variety of SMAW electrodes available, weld metals mechanic with mechanical properties can easily be predetermined and control the match to base metal properties. Okay, now a little bit about SMAW process limitations. Because the SMAW electrodes are not fully used in the process, they have a very low efficiency rate. And that, that rate can be below or between 65 to 70 percent. Because of the wide range of SMAW electrodes used, the different techniques welders need to master, welding skill levels are also an issue. Because of the SMAW electrode length, welding stops and restarts are always a quality control problem. Any welding process that produces a slag such as this SMAW are always subject to slag entrapment problems which could lead to quality control issues. One of the uh, variables for the SMAW process is electrode selection. And when uh, choosing a proper electrode, you must know a little bit about the AWS electrode classification system. The E in the classification system stands for electrode. The next two digits, possibly 70, zero, are the tensile strength times 10,000 pounds. And the, the next digit, could be a one or a two, uh, would tell you the welding position the electrode can be used in. One equals all, and two is either flat or horizontal. And the next digit will tell you the type of current or coating. And this uh, may be useful information when to, to determine uh, what settings you use for a typical electrode. The next designation will be a an H, 4, 8, or a 16, possibly. And these are the hydrogen levels that are permitted in the electrode. The last digit, or letter, possibly an R, will tell you that this electrode has passed the moisture absorption test dictated by the classification system. Now we're here in the welding lab, and I'd like to uh, expand on the classroom lesson with a little uh, demonstration procedure. First of all, the uh, the low cost startup advantage of SMAW. Well, what do we mean by that? We mean that we can, we can buy a power source that will do the SMAW process for as low as $400. And the only other expenses we might need would be the, the proper welding clamps and uh, enough welding lead to give it, uh, do a given job. Along with low cost startup, the portability of the SMAW process. What, what do we mean by portability? Well. If we were working on a, uh, say, an eight-story building, all we would need to do is, is put our, our clamp on the first floor and have enough welding lead to reach to the eighth floor. So we, ha we don't have to carry our process around with us. All we need is the business end of the uh, process, which would be the stinger. Uh, another advantage of the SMAW process was the outdoor welding capabilities. And as we, uh, as we get to know our our AWS classification system with our electrodes will realize that wind or outdoor current will not affect the pr uh, performance of the process. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to review our AWS classification system. And here's an actual electrode. 
And you should find these numbers on any electrode that you would use. If, if they are not labeled with these numbers, I would not uh, recommend using them. Here, here you have the uh, 6010 electrode. And the uh, 60 tells us that, that pounds of tensile strength times 10,000. So this would be a, a good match for a base metal that has 60,000 pounds of tensile strength or less. And then you have a, the one that, that tells us that this is an all position electrode. So this can be used flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. And the final digit, which is a zero, describes the, uh, the flux composition or the uh, operating characteristics that the electrode will have. Now that we've learned about the uh, SMAW process, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a quick look at the equipment. Uh, here we have a typical uh, Lincoln Invertec uh, power source. Uh, it's a multi-process power source, but it is also a great SMAW uh, power source as well. Uh, if we'll take a look at the, uh, the mode selections, we have uh, CC Stick Soft, CC Stick Crisp, we have GTAW, TIG welding, we have CV wire, and we have CV inner shield. What do these mode switches mean? Well, like I said, this is a multi-process power source, and we want to take a look at the top two since we are in the SMAW stick welding uh, unit. Uh, soft, uh, a soft is, uh, describes an electrode, a type of electrode that has a, a soft arc. So. You have to know your electrodes, so we have to know what mode to put our, our power source in. Or do we have a crisp electrode with a digging forceful arc? So here's our two selections, and we simply uh, select it through our, our selection switch, and the, the, the light to the corresponding mode will come on. And over here we have two, two different dials that uh, confuse uh, new welding students uh, occasionally. We have a hot start control. What is hot start? If we have our uh, amperage setting at 100 amps and we set this at, at 50 or 5, excuse me, we have uh, a certain percentage above that other amperage just for the start in milliseconds. This is uh, a control that uh, is used to eliminate cold starting. Okay? And we also have arc control. What is arc control? It, it, it uh, adjusts the forcefulness of the arc. As the numbers go up into the plus category, the arc becomes more forceful and can, uh, can solve problems such as improper fit up or tight fit up. I'd like to uh, finish our notes off on the SMAW process with some critical variables that will affect the welding and the welder should be familiar with. The first item is the direction of travel. Something important about this is notice the angle of the electrode. It is angled in the direction of travel and this will directly affect bead profile and weld penetration. The next item is the shielding gas. This gas is created by the burning off of the electrode flux. This shielding gas envelope will protect the molten weld pool until it solidifies and gets below its critical temperature. The next item is the slag covering. And like the shielding gas, the purpose of the slag covering is to protect the weld bead until it is cooled and stabilized. The next item on the screen is the solid weld metal. This is just showing the position of the finished weld bead and its depth of penetration. After that, we have the weld puddle. This is showing the actual molten weld metal being deposited as the weld progresses. And our next item is the electrode core wire. The purpose of the electrode core wire is to provide the specific metal alloy to the weld deposit. The mechanical properties of the metal core of the electrode should be a close match to the mechanical properties of the base metal. The final item shown is the welding arc. The purpose of the welding arc is to provide the heat source to melt both the base metal and the electrode core wire to produce the weld pool. An important variable to consider about the welding arc is what is the proper arc length for a given electrode. These are all the variables a welder needs to be comfortable with when performing the SMAW process. 
That's all we have for you today covering the SMAW process. Please join us for our next segment where we'll cover the GMAW process. And thanks for watching.